Good evening. I wish to welcome you to the Lee County Board of Commissioners meeting this Monday, June 3rd of 2024. Uh, thank everyone for being here this evening. For the young people, if there's some elderly standing around, if you'd be so kind to stand up and allow them to sit in your seat if they happen to walk in. Please join me with the stand for the invocation followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Father, this evening we want to thank you for the prosperity of this county. Yes. We're doing a budget tonight, or looking at a budget tonight, that speaks to your provision for us, and we're thankful for it, Father. We ask for the wisdom that only you can give as we continue to do the uh, county's business, and we thank you for your graciousness to us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Blame it on the leprechauns. <laughs> First off, I would like to welcome the Lee County Youth Council representative here tonight is Gina De Cerbo. Good to see you, Gina. Thank you. And Pam Curley is her mentor. And if there's any adults that are interested in helping with the Lee County Youth Council, you're more than welcome to jump up there and grab Pam Curley with the 4-H. OK, you have the agenda items before you. Is there anything additional for the agenda? If not, can I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Motion's been made to approve the agenda as presented. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Everyone has the, the consent agenda in front of you. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Motion's been made to approve the consent agenda as posted. Any further discussion? I'd just like to comment that in reading the MOA that has to do with the uh, Department of Health, <laughs> it's absolutely amazing what we ask these folks to do, and we should be just so proud of them. The, the accountability, accountability they have to endure and uh, the way they continually to do it well is impressive, and I'm just thankful for them. Do you see how many statements I have to sign affirming that we will follow the <laughs> rules of the federal government? Yeah. Any further discussions on the consent agenda? Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda She's as presented? Yep. Motion's been made. I'm sorry, we had You're discussion. Fine. I apologize. <laughs> I just recollected reading over the weekend all my responsibilities. Uh, actually, the county. I'll look at the manager to make sure she follows through. All those in favor, of signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Now, we do have public comments. Now, for the individuals in public comments, when you come forward, please state your name and your address. You will have three minutes to speak, and the, our assistant over here with IT, Marshall, will put, post it on the screen so you'll have a timer in front of you. Um, just a reminder, please uh, silence your cell phones. If it happens to go off, we'll stop and let you answer it, and then we'll continue with the work. If, I used to do that with my college students. Okay, uh, first individual for public comments is Cheryl Davis. Good evening, my name is Cheryl Davis. Um, my address is 2301 Tramway Road. I am the theater teacher at Southern Lee as well as the Arts Council President for Lee County. I'm here to appeal to you as a theater teacher, a director, and an arts advocate regarding the still unbuilt auditorium at Southern Lee High School. As you know, Southern Lee serves about half of the county of high school students, and two-thirds of those are economically disadvantaged. This means about half of our students haven't had equitable access to a performing arts space for 18 years. What does that look like practically, though? Southern Lee hasn't been able to have any full-scale musicals like other high schools in our region. 
Um, I did do so Schoolhouse Rock Live in April, trying to address that deficit. And I discovered that even this small musical was really difficult. Without access to a scene shop, costuming, storage, um, and backstage space, despite our very best efforts to cover our carpet with plastic and drop cloths, kids spill things. And we spent an inexorbitant amount of time trying to scrub all of that back up because I also had to teach classes in the same space at the same moment. Our band program has never been able to have a full performance concert. The only space they have is our cafeteria, which requires them to move every single table out of the cafeteria, to set up pipe and drape so that it looks nice and formal, and then to put up chairs for every single audience member, as well as themselves, their instruments, and their equipment. Members only to turn around that very same night and take all of it back down after they've performed. However, the most significant problem that I discovered in April during Schoolhouse Rock was that our tight space makes it extremely hot backstage and also in our house. This doesn't dissipate overnight. When I walked in Saturday morning, it was still hot, it was still muggy, and that only got worse throughout the day. During our matinee performance, several of my students developed heat exhaustion. Some of them nearly fainted. I did have one student have a serious nosebleed and another one threw up. As a teacher, it is my job to advocate and to protect these students. These are unsafe conditions. When Senator Bergen visited a month ago, I learned that this isn't just a Lee County school problem. We are the only high school in this region that doesn't have an auditorium. That's an embarrassment, and it's also shameful for a, look, a shameful look for a county that is growing at the rate that Lee County is growing. And as fast as we are growing, this problem of inequitable distribution, inequitable distribution of resources will only grow more severe. Please fund our auditorium as you're going to fund our schools. Thank you. Thank you. Next individual on the list is Kayla Wibalda. Good evening, County Commissioners of Lee County. Um, I would actually like to hold my comments for the public hearing version of the, for the public hearing of the fiscal year budget, if that's That'll all right. That'll work. Thank you. As I told uh, Chairman Davidson that uh, if you want to give a doctorate, doctoral dissertation, we're going to be here all night. Okay, thank you. All right, next item on the agenda is a public hearing for the proposed fiscal year 2024-25 fire district rates. At this time, I open the public hearing on the fire district rates. Public hearing is now open. For those that are in support of the proposed rates for the seven fire districts, you're more than welcome to speak freely. Come forward in support. If you're opposed, please come forward and speak freely if you oppose the fire rates for the proposed 24-25 school fiscal year. As, well, as always, please make sure you state your name clearly as well as your address. And please state if you're for or against. Thank you. David Smoke, 96 Northridge Trail, Sanford. Uh, I am against the uh, proposed rates. Thank you, Commissioners. I expect to be making comments on each of these three public hearings, so I will try to be concise, although it is nice speaking without the three-minute timer. I would like to correct myself in saying last time that my local fire department kept the same tax rate, even with the much higher property valuations last year. In fact, they did raise it from 0.115 to 0.125, which obviously contributed to the 76% higher tax I paid for my fire department this year. I understand there is a review being completed on our county fire services. What I would expect to see is a recommendation to regionalize some of our departments, basically merge them to reduce the duplication of efforts and improve efficiencies. The overall population growth of the county and especially the expansion of the Sanford municipal boundaries is going to make this an eventual necessity. My own fire department is a quarter mile from thousands of city residents and properties, and I am paying for this station to be manned 24-7. Now, while the city station is about three miles away from them, and while I absolutely believe the closest EMS should respond to 
any life-threatening events, whose tax dollars are really being spent for the fire services received. I know we all remember the outcry last year when the county tried to declare a flat tax across the county. I would recommend the decision to merge, combine the taxing districts be put up to the voters in those districts. For those fire districts that are still fairly remote and independent, it's understandable if they vote to remain independent. And I imagine some of our local fire boards are still very engaged and happy to maintain their authority while others are struggling to find volunteers, just like in every other aspect of our society. But I do think the mutual aid agreements would also need to be updated to reflect, to reflect that independent fire districts that want to remain independent, except for the most extreme emergencies. Finally, I will repeat myself in saying that I really wish instead of hiding behind these tax rate arguments, we had a simple fee structure, just like we do for the trash. A two-bedroom or five-bedroom home pays the same county trash fee, although we could easily argue that one uses more service than the other. I really don't understand the logic of why different homes pay three to eight times more for the same fire protection services. Remember that this tax is also applied to our vehicles so that the owners of newer vehicles that probably have more safety and accident avoidant technology are paying more to the fire department than someone like me who will drive my 12-year-old simple pickup until the wheels fall off because I don't want my annual car tabs to double or triple. I will talk about this more in the next public hearing, but there are unintended consequences to some of these tax policies that I realize may be beyond the county's level to control. Fundamentally, we continue to believe and enact policies that those who can pay more should pay more, and that is called socialism. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone speaking for or against the fire tax proposal for fiscal year 24-25? Anyone for? Anyone opposed? Going once. Going twice. Public hearing is now closed on the proposed fire district tax rates for 24-25. Thank you. Moving on to the next public hearing. And this public hearing is regarding the 24-25 budget. I will now open the public hearing for the 24-25 budget. Public hearing is now open. I would like to hear, we would like to hear from those for or against the current public hearing, excuse me, the current proposed budget. Please state your name as well as your address, sir. I am Eric Davidson, 3119 Wild Forest Road, Sanford. Good evening, commissioners. Good to see all of you this evening. I'm presenting these comments on behalf of Alan Rummel, who is on a family vacation and unable to make it to present these comments himself. This is per Allen. I'm speaking as a private citizen who happens to be a member of the school board, not on behalf of the school board. I'm speaking against the proposed county budget and CIP for fiscal year 24-25. I want to touch on several specific topics and I'll try to be as brief as possible on each, but they're all important. First, Ch Chairman the, Davis, if yes. I could, you, you mentioned the CIP. Can you keep those comments separate? Okay, I will, yes. In regards to the general allocation, with a 1.37 million proposed additional allocation to the school system, approximately $980,000 goes to inflationary items, as noted in the school board's presentation. So we're left with a approximate $400,000 increase to make improvements. We appreciate an increase of any size, but that's not enough to, to provide any meaningful correction to what was recommended in the school system's pay study, a study that did not identify any overstaffing or areas of waste in the classified space. And despite many false present representations, that study specifically includes a cost of living adjustment factor to compare peer district wages based on local cost of living. So we are not asking Lee County to support Wake County wages for school system employees, as stated in the budget presentation. We're asking to be competitive 
not to pay Wake County wages in Lee County. Being competitive is the county's responsibility in the education system's funding model and has been for at least the past couple decades. In regards to ESSER funds and the fiscal cliff, it's correct that ESSER funds allow the school system to temper local requests and cover many gaps since 2020. But those funds run out in September of this year, so that supplemental funding source is no longer an option to draw on. It's also notable that the Lee County School System made only a minimal request for funds to continue four ESSER, four ESSER funded positions that we believe are valuable enough to fund locally, including ensuring there's a nurse working full time in each school, which isn't something directly funded by the state. There is no major fiscal cliff disaster that other counties are experiencing, and that's a testament to foresight and planning of the school board and, and administration. Regarding the classified pay portion of the pay study, which represents the largest request in the budget increase, the county, the county has been focused on who is responsible for employees, but the reality is that school finance is a complicated subject and trying to simplify it in terms of splitting employees by local and state funding sources isn't that simple, nor is it accurate to attempt to do. Funding sources include three levels of government, local, state, and federal, consisting of both restricted and unrestricted funds through allotments and grants that are earmarked to be spent on certain things. Our accounting department must wade through that funding swamp and maximize dollars by shifting positions to sources that make the most sense and that shift can occur monthly, again, to maximize available dollars. The state has never paid for all classified staff that I'm aware of. There's never been positional allotments for custodians based on square footage of building space, mechanics based on number of buses, maintenance staff based on number of buildings. None of that has ever been a thing. The county has always had some responsibility to pay for classified staff. And when the state get, gave raises in the past for classified staff, it was never an amount of money that would cover said raise for every position since they don't provide positional allotments. It was a raise to the flat amount that the state provides to pay classified staff and then, fell on, and then fell on the school systems to make it all work, surely with the help of some local funds. So to suggest that the school board's pay study results are a state responsibility is wholly inaccurate. The school, the school system is still using the state minimum and max, maximum salaries for classified staff, but the burden falls to the county and to an extent the school system finance department by maximizing dollars in the various funding sources to provide annual salary increases for the classified employees. Even if the state gives a raise, other funding sources must be used to cover all employees. We're talking about 15 years of inaction here which I blame mostly on previous school boards that never dug into the details to explain to the Board of Commissioners or provide a budget presentation. There's tons of training available on this topic and I highly recommend that commissioners get into it because many statements made during the budget process have either been completely false or built on a false premise related to education system funding. If the school board is going to be micromanaged, the county needs to understand how the funding works because it definitely does not, it does not currently and is making funding decisions without that knowledge. The school board has a very detailed ADM projection based on actual residential property growth. Excuse me. I think that's related to the CIP. Um, Yes. I hope the commissioners will take time tonight to really consider an increase to the proposed general school system allotment to allow for a reasonable 
portion of the pay study recommendations to be, in, to be implemented. As a side note, the county is currently poaching employees from the school system since they're fully funding their own pay study recommendations while claiming no responsibility for the Lee County School System's pay study recommendations, which is pretty counterproductive when we're all supposed to be on the same team. In closing, I wanted to provide a list of some of the actions undertaken since December 2022, just to highlight the fact that the school board and administration are focused on student performance and well-being and on attracting and retaining new employees, not just asking to throw money at these things. We completed a nationwide search and hired a new superintendent. We completed a performance audit covering all major functional areas of the school system and approximately 60% of recommendations complete, including restructure of central office organizational chart to streamline operations, standardization of instructional materials across district, including return of text and workbooks, staffing and wage studies completed, school calendar update to end first semester ahead of Christmas and New Year's break, adoption of parents' bills of rights ahead of state action, internal investigation leading to updated anti-grooming training and policy, resolutions unanimously passed and sent to the commissioners and state officials regarding underfunded and unfunded mandates for ESL and technology cost, additional resolutions and process for charter funding and city funding, updated finance reports presented to the board monthly, joint training with some commissioners related to finance, strengthen the student device usage policy, and are continuing to work to com combat bullying on our campuses, provided lottery and capital account spend down plans that are in process of completion. These plans are being reevaluated due to the proposed, that has to go with CIP. Regardless of the decision on the county budget, this team, the school board and administration, will continue to be laser focused on improving our school system, but a meaningful investment in our people, people who live in Lee County and serve our children, would be appreciated. Thank you. Thank you on behalf of Mr. Rummel. Anyone else wishing to speak on for the county budget as presented or against? Please state your name as well as your address. Okay. Heather Garrity, 2012 Cedar Lake Road. Um, I'm here tonight as a parent of a Lee County School student and also a volunteer within the theater department um, at Lee County High School. And I have with me, as you can see, lots of Lee County High School show choir students. Um, I've worked in early childhood for 20 years, 20 plus years. Um, 13 years of it at a local nonprofit here. I know budgets are a hard thing to deal with. I don't pretend to know the ins and outs of the budget here, but I do know that the kids and what they have to deal with is a priority. So we wanted to give you a little bit of taste of what the kids do, but also a little bit of behind the scenes information from a couple of the teachers. Hi, I'm Ron Coley. My address is 873 Golden Horseshoe Lane, and I have been the theater teacher at Lee Senior, or Lee County High School, for the past 17 years, as well as former student there, a long time back. Um, first of all, I would like to say that we realize how lucky we are that we have this huge auditorium and a stage that's bigger than Temple Theater, lots of storage space, all of which I know that Southern Lee does not have and deserves to have as well. However, I think we make really great use of that because we do typically five theatrical shows a year plus two to three sir, show choir Sir, is this in relationship to the it, budget it or is, is it to the CIP, the Capital Improvement Plan? The budget in relation to the fact that we have had this proposed updates to the auditorium and renovations which have been tabled again yeah that, and not that's included. part of the, that's part of a capital improvements plan sir we're not at that public hearing yet oh i'm sorry I did this is the this is the overall county budget oh so is that part coming up in a little bit is it will be the next public hearing yes sir oh, okay i'm sorry to cut you off anyone else for or against the county budget Please come forward.
Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, Jamie Ladati, 1806 Crape Myrtle Drive, Sanford. Um, first, let me say that although I serve on the Lee County Board of Education, I'm speaking as a private taxpaying citizen tonight. Uh, I'm speaking against the general allocation for these schools. Um, you all probably know my wife, Kelly. She's the diplomat of the family. She talks to people, and she's really good at it. She encourages me to talk to people, and I'm working on that. It's a work in progress. I've talked to numerous people for the past year, and it resulted in this proposed budget. So tonight I'm going to talk numbers. Numbers have always made sense to me. Numbers are hard to hide from. Specifically, I'll be speaking to the 19% of the proposed allocated of the proposed budget allocated to public and charter schools. Four years ago, the county allocated 23% of, of its budget to public and charter schools. So committing 19% now is a 21% decrease in the county's funding effort to primary and secondary education. In 21-22, the county spent $19.3 million against the $84, $84 million overall budget. In 24-25, the proposal from the county manager is $21.5 million against a $113 million overall budget. I'm trying to figure out how the budget increased 34.5% in four years, but public education spending is only increasing 11.3% over that same time period. It can't be enrollment numbers. There's been a 4% increase in public primary and secondary education enrollment in that same time frame. In 21-22, Lee County Schools enrollment was 9,072 students. Uh, and we paid out, Lee County Schools paid through to charter schools close to $1 million, which roughly equates to about 500 additional students. So you can estimate, estimate a total public and charter school enrollment of somewhere around 9,600. The ADM uh, average daily membership in May of 2024 last month was 92.15 when you add back in the 74 December graduates from the public school system. And Lee County Schools paid out close to $1.6 million through to charter schools, which roughly equates to about 800 students, giving a total estimated public and charter school enrollment of just over 10,000. So it can't be that. It can't be that the school system is somewhat immune to the inflation that's racking every other county department. It can't be that. It can't be that the school's request isn't backed by data. Lee County Schools has done a performance audit, we've done a pay study, we've done a staffing study, very similar to the pay and staffing study that the county did for their employees that I led to uh, what I believe is about $2 million in salary adjustment last year for roughly 350 employees, and another $1.6 million in, the, in this proposed budget, equaling a total of about $3.6 million over the previous two years. As a comparison, Lee County Schools is asking for $2.6 million for 624 classified employees. Can't be that. Can't be a communication issue. Myself, along with Alan Rummel, established a budget ad hoc committee and met with county commissioners monthly to discuss the challenges the public school systems were having. In addition to those monthly meetings, the superintendent and the county manager both and both board chairs also met monthly to discuss issues. So it can't, be, it can't be communication. The numbers point to either one or two conclusions. One, the priority that Lee County places on public education is falling in quickly. Or two, the county is attempting to place pressure on the state to fully fund public education. I stand here in complete agreement that the state of North Carolina is underfunding public education. But drastically reducing our funding effort as a county is not going to change their funding effort. We're talking about a state that's been sued three times for underfunding public education and has lost three times and still won't fund public education. We're talking about a state that's dead last in the nation in public school funding effort. Hopefully our board chair and the, uh, I'm sorry, hopefully your board chair and the Board of Education Chair can both work together to apply that pressure at the state level, and I would certainly support that effort in every capacity that I can. But you can't sacrifice the 2024, 25 students and beyond until that funding happens at the state level. This can't be an either or proposition. So, as a parent of three children in Lee County Public Schools, I'm asking you to be committed to public education. 
You've all seen our stats on teacher attrition rates in Lee County, well above the state average. You know the number of classrooms that were covered last year by heroics, long-term substitute teachers, remote and video learning, teachers that are teaching double classes, teachers that are teaching through their planning periods. You've seen the number of open positions in Lee County schools uh, right now. You know that we're competing with our neighbors for a limited pool of licensed teachers. And if we don't at least attempt to keep up with them, our chances of landing th these teachers is greatly diminished. As a taxpayer in Lee County, I'm asking you to be committed to public education. My tax burden, my personal tax burden, went up 41% this year, and I'm not sitting here complaining about that. Public education is the big, biggest public service that I use and that 10,000 other students and their families use in Lee County. Don't raise my taxes 41% and then raise public education funding 6%. That math doesn't work for me as a taxpayer. It's gonna be a problem. As a county, we need to be committed to public education. It's an investment. It should not be looked upon as an, as an expense. The first question asked by anyone moving to Lee County is, how are the schools? The first question asked by any company considering relocating to Lee County is, how are the schools? In summary, and I'll wrap it up, this is what defunding public education looks like right now. We've already started down this road. Please don't continue down this road. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else speaking for or against the county budget as proposed? David Smoke, 96 Northridge Trail, Sanford. Again, thank you for your time. The second part of a trilogy is always the worst, but I will still try to be concise. First, with the continuing trend of 5% plus on money markets, I encourage every taxpayer to, to defer the suggested due date for paying their taxes and earned interest until late December. For me, it makes about a $50 difference in earned interest. I did speak in favor of the county budget two years ago, but I am once again against this year's budget. Even though I know you are struggling to maintain the existing tax rate in the face of ever increasing demands for more government spending. Thanks to government, to, thanks to federal government printing, our dollars are worth less now than last year. So in effect, you are giving us a small tax cut by simply holding the same rates and valuations. So thank you for that. At a certain point, I believe we need to focus on what's called ABC, activity-based costing. How much is it costing the taxpayer to do these various governmental functions? You already do it to some extent with some figures like PPE, per pupil expenditures. I heard some of you do it mentally at the last meeting when learning about the quarter million dollar budget for the juvenile crime prevention group to reach 120 kids in a year. $2,000 kids per, $2, per kid. Not cheap, but not totally outrageous. After sitting through the last budget workshop, I would like to share that while it was somewhat informative to me as a newcomer, most of that meeting was actually non-productive in the managerial sense. The only serious discussion and decision was about the school funding. And there was almost a decision to fund the replacement air conditioning for the existing library, which I would recommend on acquiring now, especially while facing a 12 month lead time. At least get a replacement unit on site. The issue with proper sizing until the building is redesignated is minor compared to what happens to decay inside of these expensive buildings when the humidity and temperature are not regulated. Anyways, I believe those budget workshops should focus on departments or commissioners arguing to the other commissioners on the risks of allowing the cuts made by our manager if the department head disagrees with her, respectfully, of course. After almost a full day of meetings, there were no changes I saw seriously considered to her proposed budget, even though a lot of good information was given. Regarding this proposed budget, I am concerned about the rapidly growing debt and interest expenses. Just recently, you approved about $100,000 in fees to begin selling more debt and interest for the new library, I believe. I will talk more about that debt in the CIP hearing, but borrowing costs are not going down, much if at all. And while I know we are also earning a healthy amount on our fund balance interest earnings, I believe the only ones really come out ahead in debt are those Wall Street vultures. In the federal government, when budgets are under pressure, they would consider what are called A76 studies. What these studies did is compare the cost to government employees versus contractors. 
There are many jobs that are inherently governmental, but there are many more that are not. Even jails have been privatized, though I am deeply concerned about some of those issues that have popped up. I'm not against good compensation for good employees, but at a certain point, some of these pay raises and new personnel requests should trigger a review similar to an A76. By keeping our staffing levels as lean and efficient as possible, you can avoid the worst of the pain and drama when the next serious financial crisis hits. Finally, I do agree with the manager's suggestion of moving, of moving most of the SRO budget to school funding categorization. That is an extra $2 million of school funding that the county should account for properly and get credit for when they rate local financial support for school systems. Although to be fair, I'm not sure all of it should be allocated. As a reminder to those concerned with school funding issues, those schools are only open for about 180 work days a year, while the normal employees, including SROs, are working about 250 days, I assume. I don't know how the sheriff uses those resources for the non-school days. If it is non-school related functions, then some fraction should still be retained under his cost accounting. As an FYI in my own news feed about areas struggling with growing government budgets, there are other areas of the nation discussing the value cost and effectiveness of their own SRO programs. I know I sound cheap because I am. I like living in a cheap but nice part of the country. I also understand that Lee County cannot become the cheapest part of the state because of the residents we will attract solely based on being cheap. It might even be worse than me. We have many strong growth factors here, even if the VinFast project doesn't deliver on their promises. We are going to go through the process of gentrification as more money and people with more money move here. There's a large number of houses in my community for sale, pretty close to what the tax appraisers say our properties are worth. Many are sitting on the market for months, but they are slowly selling. We will find out in the next assessment period if the sales price continues upwards. I just want you to be aware and honest with the positive and negative consequences to the existing citizens as government spending and costs will continue to increase. Don't try to create special programs for special populations to stay in their homes simply because they can't pay their taxes for these essential government programs unless you want to exclude disabled veterans from paying taxes. In that case, I will stop right now and never bother you again. Thank you for your time. I would not vote in favor of this budget, but I understand why you'll probably pass it unanimously tonight. Thank you, sir. Again, please state your name as well as your address. And are you for or against the budget? Kayla Wabalda, uh, 995 Wind Race Trail, Sanford. And I am against the proposed budget. Good evening, County Commissioners. I'm Kayla Wabalda, and I am a Spanish teacher at Southern Lee High School and the mother of two very bright Lee County School students and the incoming president to our Lee County Association of Educators. Today, Lee County School staff and our supporters are all here together. We are here to hold you, our County Commissioners, accountable as we are voting constituents of Lee County. The Lee County Board of Education proposed a budget that would fund and protect us. By us, I mean all that are a part of Lee County Schools. Myself, my coworkers, our students, and our families. We need the complete budget as designed to be included in the fiscal year's budget. The originally proposed budget covers expiring ESSER funds, which are currently responsible for employing at least 22 student-facing positions. This budget would pause an ever-growing attrition rate, higher than the state's attrition rate, by making pay and salaries competitive with neighboring counties and schools. The proposed budget will put a dent in the much-needed repairs and updates to our schools and our staffing numbers and curriculum, which our students and staff need desperately to continue meeting and surpassing the benchmarks set by the state's standards. The safety, education, and overall well-being of our kids are a priority to us as educators. And as our voted representatives, they must be a priority of yours. Show your compassion and your commitment to building a promising future by supporting the education budget as designed and funding Lee County Schools this fiscal year and beyond. Save our public schools. Thank you. Anyone else for or against the proposed 24-25 budget? Okay. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we have students here. You're more than welcome to stand up. How many of you are eligible to vote? Raise your hand. Well then, come on. It's your money. Just simply state your name and your address as well as opposing or supporting the budget. Okay. Anyone else for? Anyone else against? Going once, going twice, forever hold your peace. Public hearing on the 24-25 budget is now closed. Moving on to the next item on the agenda is the public hearing on the capital improvements program for fiscal year 24, excuse me, 25-29. I now open up the public hearing for the capital improvement program for fiscal year 2025 to 2029. Those in favor or opposed, please come forward, state your name as well as your address. And this is the appropriate time for the auditorium, sir. So again, my name is Ron Coley. Um, 873 Golden Horseshoe Lane, and I'll just sort of pick up where I left off, that um, I think as grateful as we are to have what we have, I believe we make great use of that. We have, a, we do five theatrical productions per year plus two to three show choir performances. Within that, we also use kids from all around the county, grades two through eight. We do matinee performances to bring in kindergarten through uh, kindergarten up. So we've sort of taken it on ourselves because most of the schools in the county don't have theater to try to educate the entire county and bring those arts to everybody. However, despite all we do and despite all of the work that our kids do, I know that often they feel like second class citizens. And it's easy to figure out why. 12 years ago, we had a wonderful renovation at our school. We got beautiful new buildings. But in our building, we got new seats, new curtains, and new lights. We didn't get new bathrooms, even though they're the worst ones. They're horrible, and they're the only ones that the public actually sees. When you turn the corner at the school, the first thing you see is this dilapidated building that looks like it's, I mean, it looks like what it is, something from the 50s. People don't even realize we have this beautiful school over on the other side. We have a heating system that's a boiler that is from the 1950s and is incredibly unreliable. Sometimes it comes on and then goes back off an hour or so later. Sometimes it, when it is on, it is overbearing. Um, I bought a thermometer to put in my room so that I could keep track of the temperature. Some days it's been as low as 52 in my room and then I'll complain that it's so cold in here. Then the next day I go, okay, now it's 87. I didn't mean that. I, um, this is what we face whenever we come in and people in the audience also complain about this because they have we are often way too hot or way too cold in that capacity as well um, seven years ago after much begging and pleading we did get microphones from the school system which has been a great asset to us but mics only last so long and a couple of them are already completely gone Others of them are on their last leg, and we never know. They go out and they come back. But when we've even tried to just replace stuff, it's even after seven years, a lot of the stuff is not made to be replaced anymore. The thing is that we feel like we work so hard and we have so much going for us that we do, but we're not really receiving that much. The facility is also, by the way, used numerous times um, that, maybe not as much right now, but at least a couple of times a year and through the decades, quite a few times at thousands of dollars per shop, but none of that money goes back into the building or any repairs or upkeep for anything. So we would ask that you please look into modernizing what we have, bring us up with what the rest of the school is, as well as, as I added earlier, Southernly getting an auditorium at all. Several years ago, there was a lot of talk about how there may be some budget cuts coming up that would affect even sports. 
I walked into my room and I had several students that were there going, Mr. Coley, we've got to go speak at the commissioner's meeting because you know if they're going to start cutting the budget, the first thing they're going to cut is the arts. And I said, guys, guys, calm down. They don't give us anything. They can't cut that. Which I'm sorry to say is the truth. All of the money that we use comes from fundraisers, ticket sales, and patrons. And so we would like to have that help, especially concerning the building. My name is Alexa Hughes, uh, 907 Merchants Court, Sanford. Um, I am the show choir director, and I wanted to bring to you a little bit of what my kids do every day. We were there in that aud same auditorium he's talking about pretty much until like 6 o'clock at night, 8 o'clock at night, and those kids just want a place where they can feel safe and secure. So I'm going to have them. They're going to do a little presentation for you. Thank you. Thank you again for allowing them to. We're all going to slip out because one of our, three of the students are foreign exchange students who are here for this school year. 
and one of them is getting ready to leave to go back. So we're going to go see him off. So thank you. Okay. Time. Thank you. Please drive safely, wear your seatbelts, no speeding. Thank you. That is the first. Anyone else in support or opposed to the 25-29 capital improvements plan? Please feel free to come forward. No doubt about that. Athletes, musicians. Thank you again. We got anybody uh, in Hollywood? <laughs> okay, just kidding. <laughs> David Smoke, still at 96 Northridge Trail, Sanford. I call this third part of my trilogy the return of the smoke. Keeping it short and sweet, when deferring these capital projects on the schedule, I'd recommend an inflation adjustment factor per year be added to the original estimated cost. A $47 million school one year will probably be $50 million the next year, for example. In fact, I do question some of these new school building projects based on growing student needs uh, in light of the difficulty we're having maintaining our existing schools. Uh, when recent data shows a traditional public school population in decline, Overall working family sizes are declining nationwide, and as I mentioned with gentrification, the more affluent families will be more willing to pay for private or other non-traditional education options. I agree with Commissioner Carver, who suggested putting a bond issue for public voting. I suggest two bonds on the ballot, $100 million in borrowing to build new schools, and $100 million for a new prison. Let the tax taxpayers vote on these large spending items, just like we voted for the new multiplex. Thank you. Kelly Lodotti, 1806 Crate Myrtle Drive. I did not prepare anything to speak tonight, but I've been so moved by what I've heard. And I'm still in an emotional state as my son just graduated. Jamie and I are so proud. Will graduated Friday night. And I can't tell you the panic that came over me this year when I found out there was a possibility that my son would not walk across the stage on the field at Lee County High School, where I myself walked across the stage as well as my husband, my parents, We've been so vested in the public school system here for so long. I believe in the public school system. And I think where I was so paranoid about it is because I thought to myself, why has it come to this point where we didn't know that this was even something that was a danger to our people coming to watch a football game or our students, our parents, our families, and for it to be put upon us and, uh, uh, you know, for Dr. Dalsabach to have to jump into gear so quickly to figure out a way that these students were going to have the opportunity and the ability to walk across this stage, we shouldn't even be at that point. We should be valuing our public education and what needs to be done to improve our schools on a yearly and annual basis, every single year, looking at what our schools need to stay up to code and up to the abilities that they are to allow for these students to have everything that they need to be successful. Now, we did it. Thanks to Dr. Drossenbach and his team, and um, I know that my husband spent many hours losing sleep about what was going to happen about the stadium, but we had a wonderful graduation Friday night. The weather couldn't have been more perfect. We need to make sure that our students in Lee County schools, in our public schools, have the opportunity for our schools to be safe and well-equipped every single year and not have to be digging deep to figure out a way to make it all work. Thank you. Was that opposing the CIP or was that for? Okay, thank you. Anyone else for? Capital Improvement Plan 2529? Any opposed? Going once, going twice. We've now closed the public hearing for the capital improvement program for fiscal year 25-29. Moving on, under old business, 
Anyone add anything? Nothing added? No business? Nothing added? Manager's report? Nothing added? Commissioner's comments. We'll start with Commissioner Sharp. I'd like to thank everyone for coming out uh, tonight and uh, expressing your opinion about the uh, what the school's needs are. And, uh, and I can assure you in the next couple of weeks, I'll be rethinking everything that, uh, that I heard tonight. And there was a wonderful presentation by the uh, the art students, and uh, but, uh, thank you guys again. <clears throat> Commissioner Reeves, we hear you loud and clear. Thank you, Commissioner Vorbeck. Um, I think uh, thank you for everyone who did come out today, and that was a wonderful performance. One of my favorite favorite songs and I appreciate what Miss Davis what you're doing over there with the space that you've got I know the kids are making it work with the best they can um, and um, we do hear you on on the auditorium and in the, in the space that the kids are needed um, I know Mr. Coley had left but you know I, I think it's it's a little bitter, it's frustrating to hear that we had young people that came out today and, and they were worried about funding being cut and his reply was that the commissioners don't give them anything, therefore they can't take it away. Um, I would love the school board and, and as much as they can to create a dialogue with the students and let them know that there is funding that they can request and then give back. If we allocate funds, we don't get to dictate where it comes. Um, I don't want the young minds and students believing that we don't believe in what they just did. And I don't necessarily know that that's how our funding gets released. It doesn't necessarily say, okay, we can put 40% towards the theater program. Um, what we can do is is look at budgeting for a theater building, but to, to tell students that we don't give them anything I think is a missed dialogue that I would love a different way to approach them and allow them to feel inspired to come speak to us um, also with that said um, and I know they mentioned the theater getting money I know for Triple Point Dance Studio uses them for things. If their funds are going there, why is it not going back into the theater program? I don't know that answer. Um, these are things that I, I feel like should open a dialogue back to the school board on them with their, t their teachers as well. Um, and then I would love the county manager to look at on, I know I spoke on it on Friday, on the buggy building. I know I'm changing. I'm making a left turn here um, and kind of allow our current staff to look into a different way of, of fixing the drainage issues um, and not to the tune of a half a million dollars. Um, sorry, General Services. <laughs> um, I, I would really like them to kind of think outside the box and, and possibly look at, because if we've already spent money in a drainage issue or how something was poured, if we're not willing to go back and ask them what they did or if we've passed some type of, of years beyond scope, there's got to be at least something else we can do that costs less than, than what an engineering program is going to tell us to do. And then that's my only comments. Commissioner Connect. I'm good. I'm good, thank you. Commissioner <clears throat> Lovick. Well, I hope this all comes out right, but first of all, thank you for each one that came out tonight with your comments. They all heard. They are concerning. And uh, this is the tough part about being an elected official, handling people's money. What would I want to do, and what do I think other people would want to do? You know, we had a gentleman a few meetings back came to us and spoke on doing some community building and community events and you know and 
this may be the time to look at something like that because you know we're looking a school was built and we're past the time of blaming who's at fault about not building an auditorium and things at that time but about six or so years ago or so my son played for suddenly high school and they went out to texas to play football four schools shared a double decker jumbotron astroturf field they shared that so they got something right by scheduling games and stuff we may need to come together and build a bigger auditorium somewhere i don't know if that's one of our options or, or anything like that but we're going to start thinking outside the box on some things but they shared that field and it came together you know now we're and i know how it is at different levels where i've got something you don't and you kind of rub it in each other's face you know um, i know we talked about one auditorium at least they had an auditorium and the heat and the air doesn't work right but then the other ones can turn around and say well we don't have one so it's uh, throwing spitballs at each other and i think together is elected officials somehow some way we're gonna to have to come together and think outside the box and maybe some terms and uh look at some different options the way we can do some things different so that's all i have thank you thank you commissioner carver i think this has been an interesting evening listening to our citizens come by and give us some significant input i appreciate that I'd also like to recognize the fact that as I've watched the board and in particular the county manager, there are some significant angsts about having to deny some people things and being able to give money to what we feel like we have to give and realizing that the checkbook runs out before the good things run out. And I, to something to uh, what Taylor was saying, I think sometimes we miss the fact that we're trying hard to stretch those dollars just the same as you are when you go to the uh, when you go to the uh, the grocery store. So I think there's good motives and attitudes on the board trying to solve some of these problems. At the same time, I think there are some lessons learned. Maybe it's a different area, you know. It, Every year things change just a little bit. What do I mean by that? Well, one thing that comes to mind is that at the 11th hour here, we're talking about things that are really important. And to some degree, they were part of the dialogue. Uh, certainly, I think the, uh, the effort that the school board made to communicate to the board was good this year, and they did a lot of serious looks at what's going on. Um, but we set priorities for the budget in December. And it seems like maybe we could do a better job of picking the brains of people like we're here tonight and set those priorities so that the county manager has a better shot at doing the best she can at coming up with a budget that will move toward people being a little bit more satisfied. The other thing is that the pressure of the inflation and the pressure of tax increases work against a lot of the good ideas that people would like to see happen. They're hard. We understand that. How to get around that, I think, again, it's going to take some thinking on the part of the board and uh, people, the, uh, the chairman of the uh, school board came and made a recommendation that we get together and have a combined board meeting and talk about some of these issues. I think that's all, that's all good. That moves us in the right direction. At the end of these comments, however, some people are going to look and find out that their pay didn't change that much, if at all. And um, we need to go back and make sure that the kind of decisions we made this year were the right ones. We need to look at that. We need to recognize the fact that for a number of years, some people have been overlooked. And we'll do that. I heard the commissioner saying that they've heard what you've said, and I believe that's true. We'll do that. The last thing I'd like to say is that I think it could be that it's time for a referendum, where we identify some things that seem to really perk to the top, 
and decide whether or not there's an appetite on the part of the taxpayers to increase taxes in some selective areas. That has to happen in concert with the fact that the government, the local government, is willing to tighten their belts and do the best we can to reduce what we think we need. We've got to work together on that. Thank you for listening. Um, I wish we could do more. I know it's in our hearts that we would like to do more. But thank you for your feedback tonight. That's all I have. Thank you, Commissioner Carver. I just would like to touch upon a few things. First off, Mr. Davidson brought up a very good point at our workshop on Friday, and we're going to schedule a joint board meeting. Um, of course, the end of the school year, fiscal year is coming up, that we have to get this done, so we're looking forward to maybe in the next month or two uh, to have a joint and then sit down and look at our priorities. I do know that we have another funding request in talking to our bankers regarding paying for the library. And I apologize that most of you here did not attend the all boards meeting, with the exception of uh, commissioners and some of the school board members. I think, how many, uh, Jamie, Kelly Ladati was there. Okay. We talked about a lot of positive things happening. Of course, Broadway has a challenge. They're dealing with a $22 million cost to tie into sewer so that they can expand and grow. Uh, we had the city of Sanford come and speak to us about the Tri-River water system, which unfortunately is a regional water system to help them expand and grow and reduce the burden on their taxpayers as well as the city water residents, water users. But we, we have to remember that we've done a lot in the past 10 years. Uh, the WB Wicker school renovations is a very nice facility. It's underutilized. We wish there were more students there. The Central Carolina Community College had a major renovation some years ago. We're talking about a health facility renovation of the Civic Center, meeting breakout rooms, the vet tech facility and the emergency services building were upgraded. We've had some fantastic park improvements with our park plan, as well as the upcoming Lee County Athletic Park that is currently being built. And that was based on a bond referendum in 2020. I know some people were very irritated that that didn't happen in 2021, but you have to understand you got to procure the land, you got to make sure the land's usable, you have to work on building, the, getting the funding, making sure that uh, you contract the developer and the plans. I mean, it's not a process that's going to happen overnight. And I do realize the number of years that we have dealt with Lee County High School's auditorium, the lack of an auditorium in Lee, Southern Lee. I hate to say this, but I graduated from a school that didn't have an auditorium. And that school was built in the 1902, I believe. The building's still there. I'm not that old. Don't look at me like that. But that being said, um, Commissioner Carver and I had the opportunity when the former chair brought it to our attention that the school bus garage was in horrible condition. We knew nothing about it. Not a thing, but it was exposed to us last year. Both Commissioner Carver and I visited it. It is inadequate. It is not able to fully, properly, safely, and comfortably service the vehicles that take our kids back and forth to school. And that is a priority right now, to get that upgraded and, and get that improved. But we're looking at a joint opportunity to utilize both our maintenance of our vehicles within the county as well as the school, similar to what Chatham County is doing. And we did have a wonderful time going to Chatham County and visiting their joint facility, the schools, as well as the county vehicles that they service. And uh, I know the 10th commandment says, thou shall not covet, but I'm here to tell you, they got a nice facility up there, but we'll leave it at that. We have a fire study that's going to be presented to this board here shortly regarding our fire departments. We have Viper radios that we have to upgrade, and that's not a, that's not a small piece of change. 
We have a law enforcement and detention center that we do seriously have to fix, upgrade, improve. Trust me, we get the Department of Health and Human Services as well as uh, the reports on the inspections of that facility. And it's continually deteriorating. So there's a lot of needs, a lot of demands, and a lot of what Lee County can do and what it can't do all at once. So I ask for patience. We have a CIP, we have a proposed budget, and we have our fire district tax rates coming up. So without further ado, uh, Madam Manager, do you have anything you would like to add? Yes, sir. Okay. I have a motion to adjourn. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? We're now adjourned. Thank you very much. Please drive safely, wear your seatbelts, no speeding.